That second, shows, uh, how much he cares about this podcast right now. That's you guys true. are bearing RuPaul for the moment. Oh my gosh. Okay. Wade has been to um, a, a taping for them for uh, Drag Me Down the Aisle that well, involved it's, wrestling. It's actually called no Drag way. Now. I'm sorry. I, did, I was not aware. But yeah, I have met some drag queens. At what? Nice. Yeah, they, nice. Uh, they were filming a uh, wedding episode with one of our friends and we went and hung out. We Is got this to hang recently? out with uh, girls from, with, with the uh, queens. Was that recently? Uh, it was in like November. Yeah. Oh shit! It, it's airing in like two weeks. Oh my god! You You're gonna be background. no way. Yeah, we'll, we'll be uh like the family and friends that are both of you. Them. Yeah, yeah, we went and hung out. Mm-hmm. They no did like way. a it, it it was set up for a uh, like a. I don't a, know a, if I can believe you or not. It was set up for a wedding makeover, and they okay. had a, a match. With the queen, like the queens were like the managers, mm-hmm. and they had a match to to set up the proposal. And you guys were there. Yeah, yeah. Our friends no were involved. Way. Legitimately, I'm not joking. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. And, what and a room call and So is no. that why you need to watch it, just in case you're on it? Well, it's not. It's not Drag Race. It's Don't Show. It's on April oh. 19th at, at like 11 p.m. on TLC. No so way. Man, look I'll at that. We're advertising everything here. Oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah. I mean this yeah. Shout out shout out to my girls Thorgy Thor and Bibi Zahara Benet and Juju B and Alexis Michelle and our girl Corinne Mink and uh huh and and uh Hose Bay. Hose Bay. <laughs> shout outs to Hose Bay. Oh my gosh. All right. Well we have a couple of uh like legit celebrities here, Brett. Yeah, um, I know. I mean we we just we were just on a wrestling with regret seen by over a hundred thousand people. I don't know if you oh yes, that. yes, I definitely. You know, I mean, listen, listen. I was followed on Twitter Ooh. this morning by a fake Norman Smiley account. I feel like I've made it. Same. You one hundred percent made it. I I yes. We we've all had our our Twitter followers that Antonio Bryant of the former maybe you know him, uh, hey. Justin. I. Uh, I, I just like that it could have been a fake John Cena account or a fake Becky Lynch account. No, they said I want the trainer of NXT. I want a fake Norman Smiley account. To follow Are you sure it's a fake? Guy. I think, uh, PJ. I think you'll appreciate these. My favorite followers that I have legitimately on Twitter that I don't know how this happened. Uh, Major League Baseball pitcher Chad Bettis. <laughs> Let's uh, go. <laughs> uh, for, former Philadelphia Philly David Buchanan. Oh no way! And um, uh, master of all rumors and betting, incarcerated Bob. Oh, incarcerated <laughs> Bob? No yeah, he way. really. Twitter. Wow! Oh, wow! Shout oh, out, and, incarcerated uh, and, Bob. And uh, James Joel Iglehart, the guy who played uh, Aladdin, or he played Genie in Aladdin on Broadway. In the oh yeah, I was gonna say, jeez. Man, we some, well, we some, we wait, 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 Broadway loves us. Yeah, there, there's yep. a photo of uh, the, one of the guys who played Hamilton on Broadway wearing one of our shirts. What about, oh, you yeah, because of the whole uh, your affinity with the, um, what is that? That really famous play. Oh, oh, Hamilton. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I just love Broadway in general. That's fair. Performing well, arts. Well, well, you do, you keep, sh- do you keep every playbill? They're all, show. they're all framed in nice mind. very you, nice red tell yeah. us a similar story uh <laughs> a celebrity? now go yeah, red, yeah, red yeah go right, right now listen, go listen wade's the guy that knows all the famous well, people, but, okay? but but wait wait, wait. ready uh-huh go all right so one time one time i you did MMA in the park. All right, listen. <laughs> we're we're going we're gonna to start up with this. We're going to start with this. So I want everyone out there on the, the podcast averse. Yes. If you have a problem with somebody, okay? And you don't want to hurt them. They're, they're friends, but they, they got to they gotta learn. All right? They need a little learning. I want you to take your friend and go, go to whatever dark alley you want to go to. Yeah. And you you. Put put your fists together like you're gonna like you're gonna punch them in the face. Okay, and I know you want to. Yeah, you're not gonna do that because you're gonna extend no. your fingers, your your yeah. your index fingers, like you're pointing at them. Okay, mm-hmm. 
Now this is where the MMA becomes oh, finger no. MMA. I just realized what's happening. All right. <laughs> now the thing that you think about finger MMA, you're like, all right, well, this is going to a weird visit plate. No, 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 no. It's about competition. So you're gonna yeah. you're you're gonna act like you're gonna you know have a little like standing fight here. The goal is not to like you know stab your friend with your finger. Okay? No. You're not trying to kill him, all right? You're just trying to teach him a lesson. Yeah. You, you want to go for soft parts in the body. Belly's yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. You know, the back and knees, that kind of stuff. You just want to yeah. get their attention. And let me tell you, there's been times in locker rooms where I've brought people to, to quivering little messes in the corners <laughs> of the locker room doing finger MMA where they – they told me later if I did it again, they'd punch me in the face. That's understandable. Yeah, I've had, been there. But they had to learn. This is this is what finger MMA is all about. I, I encourage anybody within, you know, you got to be fair. You got to be having a fair fight. Don't just rush up on your, your brother yeah. and start poking him like to death. You got to you gotta make it fair. It's got to be, yeah, it's got to be a, it's got to be, it's one of those eye, eye things. You kind of, you kind of know if you're in the MMA as long as the other person is also in the MMA. That's right. That's right. Once, so, they're, out, once they're out of the MMA, that's assault. And assault it's just, yes. Wrong. Yes. Exactly. But, I uh, mean, you, you know, it's almost manslaughter, anybody, almost. Yeah. I encourage anybody who uh, wants to settle an argument in a, in a different, new, hip way to, uh, to try finger MMA with their friends. And I guarantee you, you'll become closer. Just like PJ and I, we've been great friends ever since i destroyed him destroyed my i've never victory. come close to winning an mma battle no but, uh it's okay I, at least i'm losing to such a a seasoned veteran as yourself and yeah. uh but what, what what would be your your story uh to to uh to combat mr Mr. He doesn't Woody have one there. that's why he went off with a figure mma tangent yeah oh yeah. okay <laughs> yeah i was going to say uh, I think I think we need PJ versus Radley Belmont finger MMA. Oh yeah, we'll film it and face. we'll send and we'll send it in. Yeah, huh. to, you know. we'll send it in to ESPN the Ocho. I mean, they need something to fill this. Oh, fantastic! We'll make boxing we'll gloves, but they're we'll, they have the extra finger out. So yeah, will they, will they Just be the... able to find time in between World's Strongest Man competition? <laughs> no, probably not. Uh, Our tournaments. Could, it's could, one of those think, things, though, that we, yeah, we can hope, we can hope. Could I, could and, I do finger MMA against Magnus Vermagnuson? <laughs> Magnus, and, uh, oh, man, he's another big nut. That's Magnus Samuelson. Yes, another big nut. Yes. That's, I was just always a big fan of Magnus Vermagnus. There's very, there's what a bunch name? of Magnuses in the, uh, Here, of I'll, course there is. I'll, 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 tell you, I'll tell you a story. I mean, it involves Wade, but it's still, oh, it's God. still uh, an abundance um, of Magnuses. Are you are you familiar with? Uh, are you watching AEW these days? Eh, we're uh, actually more of an NXT podcast. I don't know if you guys uh, yeah, yeah, are aware. I figured that might be what you said. NXT and we. You could watch both. You, yeah, you can like. Oh. You know. Yeah. Well, are you familiar with uh, one Orange Cassidy? Yeah. Oh yeah. All right, Orange Cassidy. Probably I, the greatest wrestler of all time. I, I, I'm no, no lie. I bet he could beat anybody in finger MMA. But <laughs> so one time we're uh, we're the true tag team champions. We're about to go out to the ring, and we have to walk down this hallway. It kind of looks like the old Madison Square Garden footage, where they like Hogan had to walk down the long hallway and then turn left, and then he goes up the entrance way. <laughs> so we have to walk down this long hallway. Or our music's gonna hit any second now. We're just waiting. There's nobody else in the, in the hallway except us and one guy leaning against the wall, like like in gimmick, it, it as if it was a gimmick, gimmick, even though there's nobody around. And it's Orange Cassidy, so we're walking by, and he looks up from his phone and goes, "Hey, you guys, the stepdads," and it completely throws us off for a second. That he's you know he's talking to us other than a hi and a handshake. We're like, "Oh yeah, 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 we're the stepdads," and like with the dead monotone voice looks us straight in the eyes and goes you guys are fucking funny and then just <laughs> oh, away. no way is this a real God. thing it's a real thing and i felt wow. like i was on cloud night and then our music hit and i went right out and i got powerbombed through a table yeah and that's almost like 
It's not not even time. real. Like the way that the whole setup, like it's almost like a fever dream. Like yeah. you imagined you're about to to make your way out to the ring and there's the godly orange Cassidy just standing there I mean, just he, waiting yeah, to he, he was a giant he compliment quite, on you. He wasn't quite godly yet. He was godly to us. Oh but yeah. He wasn't, yes. like, in, he wasn't AEW Orange Cassidy yet. Yeah. Like, um, well, the funniest, in fairness to most guys, how was he as like a dude? You know, the, the funniest thing about that match is we were on cloud nine and then the finish happened. It was a tables match. Um, and little did I know that the other team had prepared, had brought the tables and prepared them. And, uh, like, if you're doing a spot where you want it to break, you take the, the supports off. Um, mm -hmm. Like, if you're doing, like, a driver or something. That makes sense. But if you're laying a guy on it, you leave them on because the weight will just people do are it. heavy. Yeah. Well, yeah, they took it off every one. Or they took it off, like, some of them, but they grabbed the wrong one and went to put me on it to do a, a off the top rope elbow drop. And as soon as they put me on it, I just fell through it. Jeez. Uh, and that was the finish. Um, uh, so, luckily, we had a finish set up where the ref was knocked out, and the whole thing was that, what, like, I put the guy through while the ref was knocked out, so we should have won. So, yeah. so, the ref wakes up, and the guy elbow drops me off the top, like, while I'm still laying in the, the um, table, in the broken table, and puts his partner on top of me and wakes the ref up. And the ref sees him on top of me and, and calls for the bell. So, it still worked right. as, like, a screw job yeah. finish. The, the story was supposed to be that they cheated by doing, like, all the... One of them was eliminated. He should have left the match. But came the fact back. that they both were there uh, and they would have put him through the table and the referee was out was the story. Now, the story changed. Now, it, it kind of benefited us for a rematch because the story then transformed into we never even got put through a table and the referee just saw him on the ground in the table debris and called for the bell. So the crowd saw it as even more of a screw job than it was supposed to be, which that, was yeah. very interesting. And it got a lot of uh, fan. They weren't going to have a rematch with us at all. Uh, True Wrestling doesn't do title rematches. So <laughs> they threw it on for you guys. Yeah, the very, uh, I think it was two shows later, we had a, our, the first and only title rematch in True History because oh, the wow. fans demanded it that much uh, because of something that was an accident that ended up that benefiting just, us. Yeah, we just saved it. Damn, yeah. um, the funniest thing about that finish is one of my favorite stories. I don't think I've ever told this on a podcast. Um, Do I'm it. laying there after the match. The other team has celebrated and left. I am still laying there in the, the broken table. Like my legs up one side, the table is <laughs> broken under me. And I'm, I'm waiting. I'm like trying to sell that I'm dead. Um, <laughs> and I'm waiting. I'm like, the ref's going to come out and help me. To the, one of the refs is going to come out and help me to the back at some point. They have to. <laughs> So, and just for reference, a referee did grab me when I went through the table like five minutes earlier. And <laughs> I didn't like, know what he's going for. So I'm laying there on the table and I'm like, and there's no barricade. I'm like literally right in front of these fans and I'm just laying there. And the other team leaves and I'm like, okay, someone's got to be coming eventually. And the ref finally comes out and I'm like, thank God. The ref comes out and he leans in. And he goes, hey, man, you got to move. I got to get this table out of here. <laughs> <laughs> and he picks up the broken table and just fucking leaves me there. <laughs> well, I'm still laying there waiting for a ref to come out. And the music for the next match starts. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god and I literally just as the next person is coming out I like crawl past them through the entranceway to the back oh my god <laughs> hey man, you gotta get off this table I gotta get it out oh, of geez, here you guys wrestled the moss a couple times I was like Whew. I'm sorry this motherfucker oh um, my I, god I YouTube that is background. hysterical but that's one of my favorite stories but uh, I have I have one more. The, you were just mentioning the mutts. The funny thing about you're probably watching. We did back to back um, mutts matches in two different. I'm what? Well, this is Attitude Era episode two. Uh, okay. Going backwards. I had three. Now I have yeah. two. But we, we so we wrestled the mutts and uh, we wrestled one version of them and that version retired that week and then we wrestled another version and the next week and that version retired and I. 
right now oh, wow. and for a while only one of them was around jesus christ you took a crazy back. bump right there red oh uh, well you know that's what i do i know <laughs> uh, uh one time i remember i i injured my ankle during a match um and at after the match i'm getting up and i'm limping i'm legitimately limping and i i look dead at the referee i go i hurt my ankle and he looks at me and just re- reaches for my wrist and i think he's trying to like grab me to help carry me out he goes i'm sorry i have to raise your hand and it just raised my hand as i almost fell over <laughs> because i can't hold my own yeah, weight yeah Oh yeah, yeah, and uh, well, that kind of brings me to my last question. Was it was kind of a joint question, and I wanted to get this because I mean, geez, Mike Skyros. Yeah, he's clearly an enemy of the Dadgit era. No, he's an enemy of fun. (laughs) He's just an enemy in general. He's an enemy of dinner. Enemy of fun. Enemy of fun. Okay, so shout out Mike Skyros, except not really. So screw you, Mike Skyros. And then we will, yeah, just uh, explain the Mike Skyros feud because I'm intrigued and I really want to know more. It wasn't even planned to be like a thing. It just kind of well, happened. It um, needs, yeah, it, it, and maybe we can get him on the podcast. So, uh, Oh, you absolutely should. Yeah. <laughs> He's way more boring than us, but like... I, oh, you know, well, this is you know, that's a ridiculous statement. Brett, this has been... Wrestling. He this knows has how to been awesome. Yes. Um, but yeah, it kind of just happened where like we were we we were kind of just filming stuff for the pod for the uh the the vlog. Are and, you, and are of, you guys both uh working on that? I mean it's it's mostly Rad's pet mm. project, but yeah. I I, 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 I figured I can. Yeah. Rad is one of those guys. You know how I used to edit yeah. stuff all the time. I need, I, to I need to. I need to. I need to kick you in the face. Yeah, in a match. So I challenge. In a match. You. Yeah. Let's see it. Um, oh, I'm gonna make that kick look so good. You don't even know. Well, but we like, did it once. All so. my stuff is just like Rad's filming, and I come up with ideas as he's filming and throw it. As in. you're doing, like, yeah. If you saw the episode <laughs> where I just randomly comment about the silliness of the height of a a railing for. Yeah. Time. Yeah. That's just. I've seen every dead era. Things, what are you things I notice yeah. while we're out. We um right yeah, now. It's just nonsense. Yeah. So <laughs> we, I, I noticed very quickly in the last year how we do a lot of wacky stuff when we go out to these shows, and in general, yeah. Yeah, and and there's so many things we just never filmed, or you know, where are you gonna put it, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, we go out to eat with a lot of the roster after shows, even though we're out like four hours, maybe longer away from our house. Uh, we still want to go have a good time. Cause like I said, we, we get along with everybody. We, you know, mm-hmm. we consider them all friends. So we like to have a lot of fun with them. And it's also like, if you ever seen like being the elite, um, a lot of other wrestlers have their own vlogs online. Mm-hmm. It's just a great way to get to know them better and see who they are and we're pretty much for the same people we are in all our videos and it's, it's good to show that you know yeah so we, I, I, it was an idea i had for a very long time i decided at the beginning of the year to j- just start with our first match in 2020 you know new decade might as well start with that and uh i, bl- I believe there's four episodes out we had two more shows before all this went down so I have two more episodes that I am currently editing, and they'll be out soon. I didn't want to release them too quickly because who knows when things are going to start happening again. So, yeah. you know, maybe I'll release one a month or something. Or, uh, you know, when when there's a light at the end of the tunnel, they'll come out. But they're they're definitely already being edited. There's more Mike Skyro stuff to come uh, because he's he seemed to jump at you know into all the shows we've been at lately. So. Uh, you might have seen some stuff. He has a 24-7 title now. So yes. we were challenging for that. That There's a little bit of that in the... Oh, yeah. You that, were, that, you're you you're running around trying to find him. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And, uh, I, I hit him with the greatest go to sleep of all time. It's... Uh, it's... it's <laughs> that, and, that's, uh, that's a great uh, of you to you know, say some, that. Some yeah. of it is taking ideas and repackaging them from the yard days. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, I mean, come on. I don't want to, like, get into that, but of course. And But you guys do it, like, I just, I couldn't say it enough. You guys do it so well, and, like, I'm just so, so happy 
to see you guys doing this kind of thing. Um, and, and the stepdads are really something that I think can continue to grow and will continue to grow. Well, so, I'm going to throw it back at you, PJ. I'm very happy to see you're doing this podcast and you're co- oh. still connecting with the wrestling world. Oh, you know, oh, and, and Brett's there too, I guess. Yes, I, I've, yeah. I've, I've, I've yeah. been here. Thank you. Just, just like, just like every yard show after 2010, Brett was also. Oh, there. don't oh. recycle the burns. Don't recycle <laughs> the burn. burns. Still there. Recycling a burn doesn't make it a second. Hey, go watch. Uh, okay. Go watch. Go watch. PJ Matthews versus Ace Reed, uh, like 1999. No. <laughs> <laughs> the, what is the name of the show, Brent? I can't think of it. Now it matters. Yeah, now it matters. matters. You guys, you now guys, right next to the deck. They're already late for RuPaul. All right, here we Not go. Yet, so, three minutes. You have three minutes to answer this question. <laughs> All right. Uh, what are your biggest inspirations outside of the world of wrestling that you use inside? the world of wrestling like maybe something that helped you build your characters uh great question bro uh okay yeah with without really thinking about it i've always been into comic books and um super oh yeah comic culture geek culture uh and and so much of that is built on the good versus evil evil dynamic that really encompasses most of wrestling and, and of course there's some people who are shades of gray as they like to say but it's still baby face and heel it's still good and evil it's it's who you want to root for against who you know is you know probably going to win but you don't want him to win and that's where the dynamic comes in you want the guy to fight from underneath so coming from that you know reading comics my whole life um like for, as a baby, I had classic X Men number one, which is the debut of the uh, the new X Men of the late seventies. So it, it's before I could even remember, I was reading comics or at least looking at the pages and and like absorbing that kind of superhero culture. So and I'm sure that's it's definitely um, molded my moral compass. Um, it, my family's moral compass they were also big superhero fans and things like that it's, it's molded how i think about uh writing and structure because i was a media journalism major i was i was actually writing television scripts and things like that in college and they were all based around heroes versus villains uh whether it was specifically superheroes or not you know the protagonist is always the the hero the antagonist the villain uh, it's just how you write it and the perspective and things like that. Uh, that all came from comic books and, like I said, television thinks comic book culture. Uh, that's definitely, um, to this day, has still been a huge part of my life. And, and Wade knows downstairs I have comic book art uh, from oh, the original like... comic book art uh, that's been published in hundreds of thousands of comics. I have the original piece, you know, it's really awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, things like that. I have sketches from artists that inspired me as a kid and what what i thought was cool and what looked cool but also could look heroic and things like that and we think about that stuff for the stepdads and how we want to look we don't want to feel threatening to little kids you know right but, but then if we're going to be healed maybe we do need to look a little threatening uh you know it, it depends on that dynamic so so much has come in bright colors. We're all about bright colors. Our, our new T-shirt is like a bright, you know, a, a crazy color. Um, yeah, we we've had tons of different types of shirts like that in the past. Uh, we're we want to look like we're popping off of a, a comic book page at times. So it's really helped. Comic book culture absolutely has helped me. For for me, there's definitely a mix of a few things. Um, my background as a sports fan definitely helps me get in the kayfabe mindset of it all, of how it should look like a sport to an extent, and how like I don't want to do things that wouldn't make sense in a situation. Um, I there's definitely a little bit of video games in there, though I can't spe- I can't specify which. Like there's just definitely a little of that mindset. Again, I'm more of a video game guy than a comic book guy, so there's definitely some of that good and evil. I'd say the big things um, recently, more and more. I, drag is definitely a big one it's a performance art 
and uh, watching the show, there's so much of like so much that parallels <laughs> wrestling in the mindsets of like in their world, there's like comedy queens and pageant queens, and for like in wrestling, that would be like the comedy wrestlers and the technical guys and the guys who who make wrestling look great, um, who are like aesthetically like built like a wrestler, and st- like th- there's so much of that crisscross that's kind of interesting, um, and and stand up comedy as well and improv are big like improv and stand up are so much of my personality and coming back with the quick wit, um, always being ready to throw back at a fan, uh, throw back at an opponent. So that's definitely you have any, any particular, I'm a big fan of stand up myself. Any particular, uh, stand up comic come to mind? Um, well for like quick comebacks, definitely, uh, like Anthony Jeselnik is the huge one. Yeah. Um, which is funny because he's been on record before as taking his mindset as a comic as being a heel wrestler. Like he models himself as a comic after Rick Rude. So it's funny that I'd model myself as a wrestler after him. Um, but that's more of like the heel side of like the quick comebacks that a fan when we're heels. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just about like, I think as far as like ma- being quick and making fun of an opponent definitely comes from guys like Brian Regan um oh yeah uh guys who a keep cup clean. of dirt yeah <laughs> Guy, guys who come who are are clean but make the, like can make someone or themselves look goofy yeah. um even tv i've literally done stuff from tv during a match one time we called it someone a chicken and i started doing job's chicken dance from arrested development <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, inspiration can really, has really come from all over. It's not a specific one thing. It's just like yeah. things I see out there in my periphery. That and just adding like some small part of that to your own. Yeah, and it, it just yeah. it clicks in the moment and I pull it out of the memory really quick. Yeah. Like yeah. that wasn't planned to, to do that. It just, mm-hmm. it just happened. Yeah. That's, and, yeah, that's, that's the great and, thing uh, about gimmicks is that we're able to we, – we have a gimmick that's so close to our – real life personalities that it, oh, yeah. it complements it as opposed to us playing a character it's like oh you might as well be a dad or a stepdad you old man like it's like yeah that, it's, it's almost something a friend would make fun of you as but then you're using it to explain who you already are yeah i mean just knowing you guys like watching you walk to the ring and then your kind of mannerisms in the ring it's like that's just kind of you guys turned up to the eleventh percent almost. Yep. Like it's just a, uh, it's it's yeah, it's the Justin, the sarcastic uh, Justin that I know, and then it's also I mean, hey, Red. I mean, me and you have our own uh, our own language almost. So that's right. We have uh, our own fighting culture just between yeah. the two of us. So that tells it, a lot. Mount Rushmore. Of comic book movies. All right. Go. All right. Go. You know, we gotta think. Go. <laughs> it took you twenty minutes to ask the question. Well, give us a second. <laughs> I mean, it was like ten minutes, but yeah. They're missing RuPaul to get screamed. Well, RuPaul. <laughs> well, that's where you're going. Yeah, hold on now. <laughs> that's fair. We're in a woke culture. <laughs> All right, I'll just, I'll just talk off the top of my head here. Uh, Dark Knight, for me. Dark Knight is definitely one of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's go with um, First Avengers. I'll go with First Avengers. I'll go with... Um, let's go with Batman from 1968, I believe. Adam West, Six, Batman. 66, the one with the sometimes you just can't get rid of a bomb. Yeah, I know the yeah. show. Yeah, I'm not sure if that came out that year or not. But yeah, that, okay. that era of Batman. Yep. And for my four, uh, that's again off the top of my head, I yeah. will throw in, ooh, let's say the first Iron Man. Mm. Very good film. Oh, Very God. good I don't, film. I'm trying to think of my fourth. Um, so for me, it's going to be definitely, uh, uh Watchmen. Yeah, I, I just thought that too. I should have put Watchmen in there. 
I love Watchmen. Yeah, Watchmen's phenomenal. Especially, is the HBO version good? I haven't seen it. Yes, it okay. is. Okay. Yeah, but exactly. uh, for Watchmen, no definitely the uh, the director's cut of Watchmen is fantastic. Agreed. It's like three hours long, but it's it fills in so many things that are very confusing. Yeah. Um, totally. Watchmen is right there. Uh, just because it was a really good version of something that I never thought I was going to see in my life. Um, Doctor Strange. Because mm -hmm. uh, oh, I shit. love Doctor Strange, and I really thought they were going to screw him up. And th that was probably about as good an origin movie as they could have made for him that wasn't confusing and weird. Yeah. Hell yeah. Um, uh, Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier might be the best mm -hmm. film that Marvel well, it, has. In the entire, it, it, yeah. It's like a... It's like a noir, like mar masquerading as a superhero movie. With all, like, exactly. All the stuff. Yeah. Exactly. And, um, mm -hmm. and then fourth, man... I really want to say, I really want to go weird and say uh, Split as a, like, but that's more of like a villain origin story, um, but it's awesome. I, I highly recommend it. It's really, love awesome that film. Tie, really an awesome tie in to Unbreakable. It's a shame uh, the third part was awful. Yeah, Glass um, fell really flat for me too. Yeah, but Split was awesome. Um, yeah, Split is the best of the three. It's the best of the trilogy. But barring that, because I feel like that's a not really a super. There's no hero in it. It kind of counts, but kind of doesn't. Yeah, I'll mm -hmm. go with uh, Days of Future Past. Love think, that yeah, movie, which I think is super, super underrated. It does not get the respect that it deserves for mashing two different franchises. I mean, I know it's all X Men, but two different, you know, chronologically different timelines and, and yeah, putting. Yeah, my them thing together. with it is, it does such a good job setting up them to be able to go through with whatever they want in the future where they've retconned everything and then they immediately fucked it up. Yeah. Yeah. And that's yeah. probably why it doesn't Give get your, the, the love. Uh, Mount Rushmore. My route, my Mount Rushmore. Well, the dark Knight is definitely number one. See, that's such a, oh, I, I, I feel like it, is it overrated? Yes, but it still deserves a huge, um, you know, standing ovation. For See, what I feel like it's not, I feel like it's not, overrated i feel like it's maybe overstated to me like i my, think it's it's a popular yeah, thing my, to say. My, if, if, if when you're when especially if, since i think it was the best of the pre-marvel era or right at the beginning of the marvel that. era so it's known as the standard bearer it's the measuring stick and when you're the measuring stick that long it can become a trope yeah i think that's not yeah. small, my though. problem with it and the reason it's not in my mount rushmore and i did love it when it came out i saw it multiple times me too i just think it doesn't hold up structurally um, to the way that, of a modern superhero movie. Like if you go back and watch it now, there's parts of it where you're like, it feels long um, unnecessarily at times. Right, right. And it's not, it just feels that way because it's done in a way that isn't structured the way you expect a superhero movie to be structured now. Yeah. That's because I find it to be, it's not, you know, it, it it's a Batman film, but like it's, it, it was more than, well, yeah. Just a Batman film. Like Batman just happens to be the hero of that story. Yeah, uh, at the time it was it was awesome. It's just yeah, now yeah. I'm it, it falls short for me. See, I it's feel like it. the the longer the Marvel Cinematic Universe has gone on, the more cookie cutter it's gotten to me. Where it's kind of just like like the the Marvel hero origin story now is so played out to me. It's like. Well, we they, introduce hero in a way they go up against B list villain because it's really more about establishing them as a hero. Yeah, they yeah. overcome and, the obvious odds that they have to face and they win on to sequel. And I'm like, oh, okay, I could have just read that Wikipedia and saved myself two hours. That, that's why I love Doctor Strange and I feel like it doesn't get enough credit. Yeah, every one of the movies for for the longest time, all the origins ended with a big destructive event, and it was all about like. Um, like it, it was all—it was all about like the hero getting noticed and blah, like it was. You watched his character development. At the end, he saves the entire world and gets no credit, which is the total opposite of how he is at the beginning. Yeah. Um, and he does it by failing, which was his biggest fear. And I think that makes it a really cool. Like he saves the world and no one even notices. It's this cataclysmic event, but it doesn't happen. And, like every other movie has like sh the a whole city falls out of the sky or like. 
there's this giant event, and I love that that one kind of doesn't. It, it, that, it twists yeah. it. In, in a lot of ways, right. it's, it's very much like wrestling in that you have to go through a bunch of squash matches until you get to the big match where the guy kicks out of the finisher once and suddenly it's something new and fresh yeah. or if the, you know sometimes the heel wins and it's something new and, and fresh then, and it, well see that's why that. i liked infinity oh. war i find infinity war to be much better than end game right uh, which is fair. You, because i that love that standard. thanos one at the end of the film right and you need that standard <laughs> of this is the the you know the standard bear of the good guy always wins just to get that, you know what I mean? It yeah. On its own, you have to have the previous established. You know, yeah, I just I feel like they're it's very corporately pushed superhero well, films. Uh, well, yeah. so, they're they're also hit a point where like Guardians was big, so they tried to make everything Guardians. That's another thing is where they went with the ragtag comedy group, yeah, and they started which, applying that to superheroes that aren't ragtag comedy groups. It's funny because the biggest offender of that is probably Thor Ragnarok. Right. Mm. I but, love Taika Waititi as a writer yeah. and but director. I love, though, I love so. Thor Ragnarok. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so the trilogy. we've gotten far away from my Mount Rushmore, but uh, yeah, which is yeah. fine. So but uh, well, ba- uh, Batman 1966, like Rad said, that was like the first superhero movie that I grew up on. Love that movie. It is yeah. so campy. I love Cesar Romero as the Joker. I can't think of the actor's name, but I love his portrayal as the Riddler. Um, I did. I do love Days of Future Past as well, and I do love Winter Soldier. Um, so, yeah, off the top of my head, I would probably go with those those four. And, Brett, um, I'm sure you would agree that w- when it comes to Batman 66 or whatever you want to call it, Batman the movie, yeah, uh, it's... it's it's such a unique take on Batman that it's never, first of all, it's never been duplicated. No. Nope. And it's, it's, it's purely its own entity. It's, it's perfect in the fact that we've never seen a different version of it where it's like, oh, this, this was a way funnier one. This was, this was a dumber one. Right. It, it's its own little bubble. It's perfect because it's never been duplicated. It's set in a time period that is complete, like the 60s is completely its own time period. And it's set in that little bubble, so it doesn't feel outdated. Yeah, the old it's you know? it, it's one of those movies that you can't duplicate it because the backdrop of the film at the time that it took place, everything about it is perfect. Where it could just exactly, it just has its own place in history, and it doesn't feel outdated because of it. It's just, it doesn't yeah. like when you watch it, you're like, oh, this is a '60s film. So your your expectations are already set for where the movie should be. And then you're like, this is just a fun romp of a film where they turn UN leaders into sand. And yes. then a drunken captain ends up, sorry for the, all the spoilers, everybody, but a drunken captain <laughs> knocks the sand over and Batman and Robin have to meticulously separate all he the sand. Too, which makes it way worse. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. That movie <laughs> no. is just By the way, so ridiculous. As, as a kid, watching them separate, re, re-separate the sand might have been the most nail-biiting experience of my life. I know. I was, like five years old. I also you love that all the... All the UN leaders are too busy arguing with each other to even notice that one by one they're that, getting yeah. vaporized. It's such a real message at the end after yeah. all this lunacy. And none of it holds up, but it's not supposed to, so it's okay. It's almost perfect and that's not meant to hold up. And then the very last minute, maybe two minutes of the entire movie becomes so heavy and so real and so relatable to even today that it's almost like it was almost like all a setup for one really sick dark joke right at the end. Yeah, right. Where they, they rehydrate on. everybody and then and they don't they barely touch. Don't on. even notice. Batman is Batman and Robin are standing in the room in yeah. costume and then they just walk out. And it, it's yeah, it's not <laughs> subtle like, per se, but may, Batman maybe says one line and then yeah, that's it. That's all you needed. It's so mm-hmm. perfect. So, so yeah. Before, I, before, we, before we move away from superheroes, oh PJ, we're gonna give no, you a rush more. This has been absolutely amazing, and no, I'm not gonna give okay. my comic book um, movies <laughs> my rush more. I have one, like a couple last notes to, to add before we move away from. Comic yeah, book. yeah, go ahead. I have okay. one more Mount Rushmore after this, but go ahead. Okay. Uh, low key, one of my favorite, like honorable mention uh, comic great book villain, movies. Great villain. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Lego Batman is way better than it should be. Like with Will Arnett? Um, yep, it, yep. It, it, it's like 
the best uh, so good. follow up to sixty six Batman that there's ever been. Oh wow. Yeah, that's right. pretty fair. Wow, that's um, a I have really have to check that out then. The Will Arnett one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who yeah. else is Lego Batman? Yeah, he is. I mean, Lego like, Masters is they, one they, of the best. They reference shows. stuff from the old show, like they reference the sharks, bat, the bat shark spray yep. and stuff. Like, oh, the shark repellent. Yeah, there's so many. <laughs> there's so many deep references. Um, I mean, it, Condiment King is in it. That's all you need to know. It, it's truly a love letter to all of Batman, and and, and it so it great. also openly makes fun of Suicide Squad, which is really funny. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm always on board for that. Suicide Squad is a guilty pleasure for me, just because uh, I was so st- I was so stoked to see Captain Boomerang on screen, and mm. he was one of the few parts of it that was yeah. not terrible. <laughs> just yeah. to bring back wrestling, ha- definitely I'm happy a uh, I'm happy definitely a an influence for you on your Mr. Wade Kruger, I would imagine. Correct. I mean, I, I've cosplayed as Captain Boomerang a few times. Yeah, um, exactly. So, oh. uh, Last guilty pleasure, uh, Mount Rushmore mm. would be uh, Batman and Robin. Oh, all right. Oh, all right. see, mine is mine is Batman Forever. Oh uh, yeah, okay. First of all, <laughs> yeah. I think I I'm talking think, Batman and Robin with Christopher Chris O'Donnell, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I yeah, I, I was told this once by somebody, and I it's now like my basis for Batman and Robin. And that, <laughs> Uh, he he was ra- I was talking to him about to rate it like between one and four stars, and he goes, "As a movie, it's one star, it, just because it's complete and it it like you get through <laughs> it and it's done." Uh, but he said it's the greatest toy commercial I've ever seen in my life, <laughs> and, and he he said he said it's brilliant in that. You just spent an hour and a half to two hours watching a commercial, and you kind of knew it, but you didn't really realize it because you're <laughs> laughing too much. It's the best commercial the, ever made. The, the reason, the reason I have a, a, an actual love for it is, it's there's so much camp about it that I love. Like at the time, camp was the opposite of what people wanted. They wanted like '89 Batman and stuff yeah. moving towards a serious tone. Batman and Robin would so, definitely be better now. Batman and Robin today would probably be appreciated for being as funny as it was, even as it was unintentional, because the camp factor was so big. I mean, like, you had, like, uh, Poison Ivy was essentially, like, a pin, like, a Marilyn Monroe pin-up character yeah. as a villain. <laughs> and you had Mr. Freeze was talking, it was uh, this Jack dude speaking in puns. Like, th- there was something very 60s about it that was awesome. Yeah. But it wasn't what people wanted then. And, yeah, I find I Batman it, yeah. forever. I find Batman forever to be like that too, with the I'll overtime. I'll forever trailer, love that movie. Uh, yeah, Harvey Dent as, as, uh, or Val Tommy Filmer. Lee Jones as Two Face. Val uh, Kilmer is, uh, I think, the best Bruce Wayne. I absolutely agree with that. That's that's interesting. That's the I, I, I was uh, I was talking to a coworker hmm. this week about uh, the best looking Batman, and I believe the Batman that opens yeah. Batman forever with the the yellow bat symbol and yeah. that ch- in the chin Val Kilmer's chin it to me that's the best <laughs> Batman ever yeah, been mean chin. my version of Batman wow I, yeah, that, that I, I like can Batman see that me. yeah I can see that I don't and know then, if it was the best looking Batman movie but Batman no no I'm saying general, uh, the way yeah. he looks in that in that like 10 yeah, 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 yeah. minutes to me yeah. that's right off the comic book page that's Batman. oh yeah the the pronounced or at least, or at least chin. as close as we ever seen and and it's it's not a movie but I have to throw a shout out to Gotham I love Gotham yeah, um, Gotham's great. Oh, yeah. If you tell, can tell get, me why I should watch Gotham. If you can get past the fact that the first season is absolute garbage, okay. Um, the the everything that follows it, yeah. is some of the definitive versions of a lot of villains. Uh, the okay. Riddler is awesome. Penguin is awesome. Um, friggin' uh, Benedict uh, uh, B D Wong as uh, Doctor Hugo Strange so amazing. is incredible. Um, movie worthy. Yeah, you you have Check. an awesome take on the Mad Hatter. Um, their 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 Joker prototype is really awesome. Uh, they they do the crime stuff really well. Uh, it's it's really yeah. really good. The, the, if you and and they start to ramp up the camp later. I mean, there's a part where they literally blow up a, a, a penguin blows up another one of the bad guys with a fucking bazooka, and it's incredible. Yeah. Um. Because it, it fits. Yeah. The, the first season is very procedural drama. That was what they were going for. It, was like, it was like Law and Order Batman. Yeah. And, and it clearly didn't work. So they switched it to way more 
uh, first, of, yes, first of all, it's more serial. It's it, they they heavily lean, lean into actual Batman stories, and whenever you do that, obviously it's like oh you're ripping off the comics or whatever. But those are tried and true. Yeah, they do no time more. tested right. stories, so they're great. And it's they not, modify them. Yeah, it's they not modify ripping them off. It's just them. like hey, let's just adapt material that already exists because it's good. Right, yeah. but they're doing yeah. it within the guise of the Gotham universe that they've already set, which makes it different enough that you're. You you see what's happening if you're a comic book fan like me, but you still don't know what's going to happen because the characters are different. Yeah, and uh, I will say uh, Ben McKenzie is a very good uh, Gordon. Yes. Um, and he, he gets even better as it goes on. And the, the the cameos and, like, the people that they bring in and out are all very entertaining. Like, the villains rotate. It's like a villain will come after the GCPD and then they'll kind of lay low for a while. And it feels like it would actually, how it would actually be. Hmm. So if you can get through the first season, which is worth watching because Penguin's development is really awesome. Penguin is the highlight of season one. Yeah. Um, but I, I would say check it out. Yeah. Like for okay. me, I watched, I watched the first maybe eight episodes. I fell off completely. I jumped, I, I watched like two or three other ones in between, but I, I then I jumped back into I season like forced two. forced you back into yeah, it. Yeah, he got me into season two, and I started from season two on. So I, I watched maybe half of the episodes from season one, but I, okay. I didn't feel, I didn't really feel that lost. Like, if you could um, find a recap of season one on yeah. YouTube or something, watch it. And then yeah, I'm sure, it. I'm sure Man of Recaps probably has one if I was yeah, yeah. Uh, And uh, yeah, if you watch out. some sort of thorough recap and then jump into season two, I, I, my personal opinion, you'll be enthralled by season three. You're going to love it. Like, if oh, yeah. you think, if you like Batman, I, I think it's a very good yeah. Batman esque show just without Batman, which they, is crazy. They, but, they, yeah. they take it away. Like, yeah. It's definitely different from the comics, yeah, the, other like the world. origins and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, the Riddler origin is super interesting. He works at GCPD. Like, he kind of is like the Dexter of GCPD, where he's working Great there, show. but also like turning into the Riddler and committing crimes. Uh, for a little bit. Um, so there's kind of that fun dynamic of that he's working there, but he, you know he's going to turn. Hmm. I do like that. And, uh, yeah, I mean, for those of us that needed, to be, that needed to be convinced, like myself, and then for those who needed to hear that from the stepdads themselves, <laughs> here on the NXT and We podcast, we are here. With the stepdads, Radley Belmont, the rad dad, Radley Belmont, and the pop bear, Wade Kruger. And uh, my next question that is off of the wrestling spectrum is another Mount Rushmore, if you guys are ready. Is that, is that okay? Mount Rushmore, Mount Rushmore's. Yeah. Well, let's go. <laughs> Mount, Mount. Uh, it was a question that kind of uh, went towards you guys as the stepdads. The top, the Mount Rushmore of TV sitcoms. I, I, I knew that was coming. I, right. knew, I knew it was either going to be sitcoms or like um, TV dads. <laughs> there you go. Go. I'll give my personal favorite. So, Brett, you know um, what I'm doing. Guess, I know you're number one right off yeah, the bat. I bet you do. Married with Children. Uh, yes, Married with Children. I grew up with it. There we go. Yeah. So, like, I understand it's different culture now, but people look at it and they're like, oh, it's a sexist show. But to me, I just think of how my parents were and how it was. it was almost like, subtle little jabs of love at each other you know and how mm -hmm. it, it actually meant they cared so that's how i look at it still and i i i still absolutely love that show i love mary with children um well al that, bundy I, is just a treasure right oh yeah and, yeah. and it's so so memeable too in this day yeah as well yep. which is great because that show has been off the air since 1997 and the fact that people still know it as well as like Fresh Prince of Bel Air and those type of shows, or or shows, Seinfeld, or yeah, uh, it shows how much it resonates even today, and it's, yep. it's phenomenal. Uh, I wish we had more shows like that. To be honest, um, another one that I feel like is kind of forgotten is Third Rock from the Sun. Okay, I, well, I had Joseph Gordon-Levitt action, right? John yeah, Lithgow, and go. John Lithgow is uh, the main, I, I guess, the main character, if you want to think of it that way. Um, aliens trying to understand the world, which is fantastic for me when I'm like a teenager trying to understand who I am. Right. Uh, it, and so so much fun with that. Um, I watched that show. I never uh, watched the last episode. I just couldn't get myself. You just to watch don't want to do it. 
I don't want to do it. I you don't want to see how it definitively ends? I know how it ends. Um, I just don't want it to end. I, okay. I, you know, I think that's it, fair. It, it, There's yeah. some people that refuse to read the last chapter of their favorite book. Yeah. So that's it's pretty much the same um, thing. And, and just for the record, I, I did watch the last episode of Mary Will Children as it aired in 1997. I just didn't know it was the last episode. Yeah. The way it ends, even though it's a sitcom and there's like no actual change, the way it ended as my little like nine year old brain went, that sounds like the end of a show. (laughs) And it it was. So, yeah, I've never watched the last episode of that 70s show because I don't really want to know. Yeah. Um, Other, another one, um, MASH. I don't, I, I think that counts. Oh, wow. That's yeah. a throwback. Never watched it myself. Uh, I know an iconic TV show, though. Yeah. Uh, 11, I think it lasted 11 years, over 150 episodes. I watched it with my grandfather and my father. They loved MASH, Alan Alda. Um, I still love that show. Not that I watch it any, you know, that much anymore. Uh, but mm-hmm. if it was on, like, I would absolutely watch it with a friend or in, like, a break room at work or something. Yeah. It might I still be on TV land. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think it still holds up. I think the humor is kind of timeless because it's set in the middle of a, a war, you know, the war time. So their mm-hmm. humor, they actually tried to base the humor on that era. So um, outside of like a couple of random celebrities they might mention, I think the humor stands out really well. Um, and it has a great message. The whole idea of like these people stuck in the middle of a war that they don't even care about. They don't want to be there. Yeah, and they're almost like the humor drives them to not kill each other. Essentially, if you want to think of it that way, that's how it uh, keeps them sane. Exactly, it keeps them sane and it brings them together. And uh, for the record, I've also seen the last episode of Mesh, which was a television movie that was the highest rated show of all time all on time. television at the time. Wow, uh, and that is Still an absolute. Is I, I believe it still is, and uh, it's an absolutely beautiful ending. And I actually am glad I saw that. Is that is that rating that you're talking about? Is that just for like a sitcom rating? No, television, all time television. Yeah, all time. Really, television. like like yeah. higher than a Super Bowl? Yeah, the, the mesh. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Wow. The mesh. That's crazy. The mesh ending is um, that's I'll, insane. I'll give you an example because yeah. I I I might be talking on my butt, but uh, the lo- the highest rated wrestling match on television ever was a, a, a 225 point something rating, which think about Raw, they get like two point something. Yeah, yeah. right. So it, you're, it, yeah, you know. it was Hogan versus Andre, Saturday Night's main event, uh, or the main event, 25 12, point something. 12 times larger right. than yeah, Raw's Mash, average rating. Nash was 80 point something. Oh my yeah. God. Every every television in the United States. Yes, was that's exactly what it was. Uh, yeah, every they, single yeah. television. And and wow. back then no, no. that meant about eighty percent of all the televisions in America were watching that show or something. That's around. incredible. It's honestly impossible for any. It anything. won't happen ever again. So, yeah. yeah, it's Especially impossible. The eleventh year. Many shows. Think about that. The eleventh year of a TV show, and eighty percent of the country went. Yep, this is relevant enough for me to watch. Yeah, well, yeah. that's there's. It's impossible to replicate because of the amount of channels or streaming services or yeah. video yeah. games, or it, it'll never happen. It's like, impossible. Right, yeah. Uh, just, just if the go, super if the Super Bowl can't beat it, then no television yeah. show can. To go a little right. bit, to go a little off that, just because there's so much streaming and like options nowadays, it's like the '90s is might be the last like nostalgia era because everyone after that has their own thing to watch. Mm-hmm. It's like yeah. Everyone had like their own YouTube videos they watched that were popular, or their own TV shows because there were so many channels back in the day. Like in the '90s, it was like Cartoon Network or Nick. Like they, yeah, we all grew up with one of a few options. Disney Channel, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, even like video games. It's like people's nostalgia is like uh, could be like stuff from um, like indie games or like there's so much yeah i feel like you have like indie pc games or you have nintendo or playstation slash playstation 2 like that's just because of what was available yeah yeah especially nintendo though you know i'm trying to think of his four i'm trying to think of a last one um you didn't have four third rock from the sun mash married with children yeah for uh, all time I, TV sitcoms, yeah, so many. Come on, and uh, maybe I, I didn't. 
fourth. I might want to go with the Simpsons. There you go. Yeah. Because uh, when I was young, obviously, I was really into cartoons. So oh. Simpsons was a huge part. Plus, um, the early seasons, uh, a lot of my favorite episodes were written by Conan O'Brien. And I, to this day, yeah. I still watch Conan O'Brien every night on his uh, TBS show. What? That's 25 Can... years of that. We need, we need Papa Bear's Mount Rushmore of, of okay. sitcom. Yeah, what the hell? I don't know. You, you wouldn't shut up. Um, Back in my day, uh, I was gonna say The Simpsons, but I feel like Ryder said it. So so but like, I literally quote. I've quoted. Oh, I've man. quoted Grandpa Simpson in promos before. Um, but I will go with The Office because I have watched it so many times. I know it's yeah, a cliche right. answer. Uh, no, nope. I, I could probably quote most of it. Um, Boy Meets World. If that counts, uh, yeah, so. yeah, yeah, of course. Um, does now. There's enough funny in there that like, and it 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 just always stuck with me. It came out at the right time in my life where I watched all of it. It had wrestling. It had uh, like important lessons. It, it was everything. That show was everything for me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> wrestling. R.I.P. Vader. <laughs> yes. Oh. I thought uh, you were. I thought you laughed because you remembered what wrestling was all of a sudden after all these yes. years. Uh, I mean, I guess I'll just keep taking this. An <laughs> underrated choice that I feel like not enough people talk about. Uh, Malcolm in the Middle. Mm-hmm. Great, Great choice. Also love, wrestling. Love that show. Also uh, wrestling. Yeah. And more recently, uh, Community. I have wanted to watch that show forever. Well, and right now, on, the cast it's, is on so good. it's on Hulu and Netflix, and we're all stuck in the house. So go fucking launch it. There you go. Wow. Yeah, I've been, I've been, I've been on a uh, Seinfeld kick. It just got put back on Netflix. So okay. I, that. I, I, I was, do, yeah. I do love Seinfeld. I watch Seinfeld. Yeah, Netflix. I've been watching a lot of Seinfeld. It just, so. it just misses my top. I feel like if it was in my era more, I would appreciate it more. Right. Uh, there, right. there is stuff I can't quite appreciate as much. I mean, I love it. it there, there's so many episodes I love, but it, it can feel repetitive and tedious if you're watching it in like a, I, I can't it, like marathon it. Yeah. Some people who really love it, who, you know, were, uh, I was obviously not really like, I was alive while it was airing, but not, yeah, I was not same. watching it. And there's a lot of talk about like you know old technology so like cell phones and voice mailboxes and i'm like yeah it doesn't it's still very funny because i remember a time when all those things still existed but they're not really relevant to yeah. today meanwhile there is like i love i feel the same i love curb your enthusiasm but yeah i only watched so much of it at a time before I right stay, like, right um, I, feel, I feel seinfeld is very relevant to like dating in the late 80s to 90s and yeah. it's like the experience in 2020 is not what dating was and also, in the 90s. Uh, any any of the shows that have good continuity, are, I'm always a fan of. Like How I Met Your Mother, I always felt like had really good continuity. Um, and like if you watched it regularly, it rewarded you for that and was funnier because of it. And I always appreciated that about that show. Same with like Arrested Development. The community does that as community well. Community does that as well. Yeah. I, I love shows that have like, it doesn't just reset every episode. Right. Which, that's something I do appreciate about Seinfeld, though, because it makes it so easy to casually watch because you are you don't really have to worry about what season you're in, oh, what episode oh, you're on. It's so just like, oh, Seinfeld's on? Yeah, sure, I'll turn it on because it's all pretty much self-contained. And then, and then there's shows that do it to a fault where, like, Boy Meets mm-hmm. World is a perfect example. Their are characters, people have sisters, and then they're gone, and then, like, mm, yeah, th- there, there's no continuity. Married with Children has right. that, too. There's a, a kid that they adopt adopt for six episodes, and at, in the, the sixth episode, they make fun of him a bunch. He goes up the stairs and says something like, "I'll show you," and goes up the stairs, and you never see him again. He's never mentioned again. Wow, that's dark. What did yeah. he kill himself? We don't know. Yeah, that's dark. Yeah, that's very very dark. But when he left, the ratings went up, so it was worth yeah. it. <laughs> he showed them. Yep. Oh, that's good. That's also, good stuff. I, I recently just watched Frasier for the first time. Very funny show. Mm. Very, I've, very never seen, funny. I've never seen yeah. Cheers or Frasier. So. Um, My girlfriend is a huge fan of Frasier. Frasier so is very smart. It like, it's very smartly funny. Like, you, okay. It's not, like, not like you have to be a genius to watch it, but like, there's jokes that I really appreciate it because they're like, 
I'm like, okay, I, I, I like that. Yeah, they kind of just slip them in. Yeah. Hey, this has been uh, this has been obviously you guys are recurring guests, right? Now going forward. Oh yeah, I mean technically so, not yet, but we will. So, when we come well, back yeah. our our good friends Radley and our good friends Wade, who will be recurring guests. I feel like we've already like gone through a season together tonight. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, so yeah. Yeah, this will be a two-parter. Shout out to anybody. And again, just a shout out to you guys. Seriously, um, this has been very fun. I mean, we, we, we feel like all of our interviews have been very different. Would you rather fight yes. 100 duck-sized horses or one horse-sized duck? I know what my answer would be. Do you, do you want to say it on three and see if we have the same answer? Okay, I'll do the right, countdown. It's sound like a mess if we both say the opposite thing. All right, I'll do the countdown, and then you guys can hash it out amongst yourselves. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. One hundred horse-sized duck ducks. ducks. <laughs> Don't we? <What? laughs> <laughs> One hundred uh, duck-sized duck horses. horses. Yeah. Okay. No, so I agree. I agree. I was just messing around. I agree. Okay. So you guys, the stepdad versus one hundred duck-sized horses. Yeah. That is a lot of hooves to fight. No, no, no. Listen, so we wish my you logic guys is... the best of luck. No, no, no. The I logic can... is they're so small. Like, okay, I get that horses are strong. They are mm-hmm. super small. Yeah, I, I have a really good punt, dude. Yeah, same. Okay? I, I played soccer for 11 years. I'm kicking these horses yeah. over the fucking horizon. I, 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 w- I, was, I was playing soccer for Utah State in, uh, in uh, elementary school. I was doing tournaments. So I'm ready to kick some duck-sized horses. Yeah. Okay. You, I, you think I could punt one of these horses over the over them mountains? Because I think I could. Those duck-sized mountains? Um, cause if you, if you're fighting a horse size duck, ducks can be vicious. Ducks are terrifying. Have you ever ducks seen- Ducks are terrifying. Inside of their beaks are horrifying. Imagine that beak being a horse size. Imagine that thing coming out of the water, coming at you, size of a horse. Yeah. You know, I, I just love that most of the, every other interview that we've had has not been a tag team. And they've all said that they would rather fight one horse sized duck. Because they're, so they're all yeah, they're all gonna die. The ta- <laughs> yeah, they probably would. Uh, none of them had especially good game plans, but I just love that the tag team, the stepdads, unanimously voted to fight one hundred duck sized horses. And I just, just please get it on film for me, gentlemen. We'll, we'll do, and we'll uh, like, really? like, think about that. No, no, no. So, like, a duck can swim. Yep. Yeah. And it can fly. So if it was horse sized, it would kill you. It's a Pegasus. It's a, it's a Pegasus with a beak. Yeah. And it doesn't have teeth, so it's gonna try and swallow you whole. So that's evil. That's so terrifying. Horses, you could punt them into a lake and you might be fine. Do they it? can't fly yeah. after you. You could hop in a car and just run them the fuck over. Yeah. This you is assuming that you're fighting near a body of water. You know I guess if you're gonna fight that many horses they should probably be near water listen we'll even do it 300 style as long as we have like a back alley or something where they gotta oh, come get on good, with us good or idea them back into, into their own little horde yeah, yeah. You know what, good idea you, know you can't run over with a car a horse-sized duck <laughs> a horse-sized anything <laughs> you know what you can run over with a car a whole shitload of tiny horses you you might total your car in the process. A lot of a lot of hair in the in the radiator, but, but the question is, you is, you would survive. You, yeah, we live you, on. You might. Yeah. You know what's yeah. definitely gonna total your car? A big fucking duck. Yeah. True. Also, wow. they're they're secretly hep- like I don't know. You ever seen a Canadian goose? They look like footballs. The, uh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I've take I've take witnessed someone, many Canadian. Take it from Canadian. someone who one time was very high and thought they looked like a football and tried to kick one. It fucking hurts. They don't move. The geese? You've had someone kick a a goose. I kicked one. You kicked one. While I was high. Were you not listening? No, I thought you said your friend did it. I thought you said your friend did it. Wow. How did you get your hands on a goose to kick it? 
Well, I didn't get my hands on it. I got my foot on it. You just ran up to it? <laughs> I This story has so many layers. It didn't you, fly away. You just you, ran up to it and kicked it? Have you ever seen them? They're really not scared by much. Wow. Like, have, you, have you ever driven up to a, a, a street and a bunch of them were walking across the street? They don't hurry up. Yeah, that's true. That's they're true. Like, they're like, you'll wait, motherfucker. Turkeys um, do the same thing. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, next time you see one, go kick it. It hurts. No, They're thank you. Than they I'll are. just take I'll just take your word for it, Papa Bear. And that's no, only a normal sized <laughs> goose. Imagine yeah. what happens if you kick a horse sized duck. I would just like to say for the record, Radley Belmont's stepdad's trademark does not ask you to go out and kick any sort of animals. Thank you. Thank I do you. not recommend kicking a goose either. I was in high school. <laughs> it was a bad decision. And you will live with it. And it hurt my foot. And I don't for the room. <laughs> For the remainder of your days, you will live with it. You did not last two minutes in the crucible with a Canadian goose. No. That's right. If I uh. finger him and make I might have won. But I don't, we'll never know. I, that, that's a question we'll never know. Maybe that's the question I should have posed to you. You could give me the choice of 100 duck-sized horses or one regular-sized Canadian goose, and I'd probably still <laughs> take the horses. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Well, all right, gentlemen, this has been fun. We appreciate having you on and giving us two hours worth of your time. You're definitely way behind on your RuPaul episode at this point. So on demand seems like it's your only. Definitely mad. Uh, So I, I really apologize for possibly getting you in trouble, but I do want to thank you immensely for joining us here on the NXT and we, podcast and yes, uh, just have just having a laugh with us and at us so we do the only way to do it man the only that's right that's right now you that's know what right. you're in for if you ever bring us back this that's is right sure. the price you good old, we won't even call it an interview next time we'll just call it the roast of oh was this an interview <laughs> well not much of one sometimes no. our answers are 20 minutes long so you needed to remind people who <laughs> yeah, this, this this was sort of like uh, the movie Memento, where you just had to constantly, you, you know, look at photos of yourself to remember who you oh, were, I thought, I thought you or, or places you've been. <laughs> no, movie. This uh, is kind of like the movie Memento. Bad. <laughs> wow! Don't you talk about Christopher Nolan that way? I didn't oh, talk about works. Christopher Nolan. Oh, I talked wow. about Memento. Okay. Memento was a good film. It's actually pretty good. Yeah. Listen, yeah. He made you The Dark to... Knight, one of my Mount Rushmore movies, okay? I know. And here you are trashing Memento at the very end. Well, no one can ever say that Papa Bear Wade Krieger doesn't go down swinging. So, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. He's, he's controversial, as you can see. Memento's right. kind of just like a ripoff of Finding Dory, if you think about it. Memento you know, came out first. Later. <laughs> yeah, but if, if, if the Di- script was already in, if, they just if, didn't film if, it. If Disney made it, it takes precedence. <laughs> that more people probably know what Finding Dory is than the movie Memento. There you go. But, all right, gentlemen, we won't take up any more of your time. We hope that your girlfriends aren't aren't mad at you for missing RuPaul's Drag Race. So nope, just mine. And, <laughs> yeah. So go go enjoy that. Um, and we will catch up with you guys soon. We, we look forward to it. Yeah, we'll see you okay. next time, guys. All right. Ciao. Bye. Ciao. Bye. Well, everyone, that does it for episode 17.5 of the NXT and We podcast with Brett Monroe and PJ Geary, alongside our friends, Rad Dad, Radley Belmont, and Papa Bear, Wade Kruger. We implore you guys to join in the conversation yourself as always, and you can do that by visiting our page on Facebook at NXT and we, you could hit us up on Twitter at NXT underscore podcast, or you can email us at N X T A N D W E at gmail.com. That's NXT and we at gmail.com. Once again, we want to thank everyone for listening and supporting the podcast. And if you enjoy the show, please make sure to tell all your friends about us and leave a like, a review, and a rating as it will really help us to reach out to more people who may enjoy the show as well. Make sure that you're subscribed or following the NXT and We feed so you get all of our newest episodes and they will automatically show up in your queue or feed 
without you needing to lift a finger. And remember, choose NXT and we because we are NXT. Peace.